Hi, my name is Jenny and I'm 27 years old, he was the most stunning man I've ever laid eyes on, and three years ago I tied the knot with him, he never fails to lift my spirits because he is a caring and funny kook, his mother, Maria, also known as my mother-in-law, does not share this lucky fortune, she has had it in for me from the start, and I finally get it, she wants to keep her little kid safe. And I can see why, on the other hand, I think she goes a little bit crazy at times, Maria has a habit of committing seemingly minor and innocently naive injustices, but what she really does is purposefully irritate and provoke people so that they appear to be the ones going insane, my mother-in-law is someone like that, and I'm sure we've all dealt with someone like her at some point, because of my unconventional upbringing, I am the kind of person that isn't afraid to say what's on my mind. The fact that Hugo is more reserved and mild-mannered than I am perhaps contributed to his attraction to my character, so the old adage goes, opposites attract, my mother-in-law Maria's evil intents are clear to me because of my training in psychology, the first time we met, she made a remark, and I take that as a sign that our powerful personalities don't get along, her response was, Jenny, don't you think it's time to stop eating so much, without without a word, everyone at the restaurant table took in breath. My humiliated and flushed complexion betrayed my total mortification, at the table sat my father-in-law Kyle and my boyfriend Hugo, Kyle lowered his head as if he were embarrassed by my shame, he was too shocked to say anything, Hugo, overcome with shame and rage, appropriately scolded his mother, exclaiming, really, mom, you have no right to say that, whatever she wants to eat, she can have my apologies, darling, I had no malicious intentions, Maria swiftly retorted, I merely intended to keep an eye on you, you've been looking somewhat plump recently, you didn't look this good when you were younger. Hugo has been showing me old images of you, I hope you understand that I am not trying to offend you, I'm merely attempting to offer you some guidance, not wanting to start a commotion, I did my best to keep my cool, nevertheless, my shame soon transformed into annoyance, nevertheless. I refrained from saying anything for the first time in a long time since I wanted to create a lasting impression on the family and because Hugo was so adorable, it was my first encounter with them, to show my appreciation for the unwanted counsel, I simply smiled nicely and thanked her, as our relationship deepened, we began to have more frequent and intense instances like that, the teasing would eventually end, I thought, after she decided I was good for her son, nonetheless, things seemed to be deteriorating further, Kyle, my father-in-law, is the most wonderful man alive, and I was starting to warm up to him, wow. Now I understand Hugo's motivation, Maria seemed to be the only member of Hugo's family who detested me, and there was no rhyme or reason for why, even though I was becoming closer to all of the other members, Jack, Hugo's boyhood pal, was even introduced to me, Kyle and Maria think of him like a second son as they were childhood friends, Hugo welcomed me with open arms, and it seemed like his entire family, including Jack and Hugo's extended relatives, were on board with my presence. It was only Maria that had a problem with me, the overwhelming majority of Hugo's relatives showed me love and support, and for that I am eternally thankful. Despite all the love and support I received, my mother-in-law attempted to pull a prank on my wedding day in an obvious attempt to ruin my big day, she deliberately sought out situations in which she could be both annoying and absurd. The truth is that she was behaving quite bridezilla-ish, no, she's meant to wear her hair in an updo like I wore on my wedding day, Maria. I'm grateful for your assistance, but I really desire this. Style for my hair. I don't believe so, Maria said in response, oh my god, you're hideous, the bridesmaids and groom all let out gasps, but I was already expecting it, oh no, darling, I just mean that you can look so much better than you do now, she said in an attempt to immediately correct her error, I simply wanted to express how much I relate to Jenny, she is a talented and intelligent young lady, and I must admit that I looked better than she did when she was her age, but I still think she is lovely, the hurt and resentment I felt persisted even after my father-in-law succeeded in stopping my cruel mother-in-law from her cruel pranks that day, I was never one to sit on my hands and do nothing, this woman was progressively depleting my firework energy, and I had to quit it, the events of today's story occur three years later, on this particular Sunday night. We find ourselves gathered around the dining table of Hugo's childhood house, which is still in the possession of his parents, it had to have 
been something important that my mother-in-law wanted to tell us all since she had so kindly asked us all, including Jack, over, it was a nice surprise, even though my concerns about her inventing the supper arrangement at random were confirmed later, eventually, everything came crashing down, and from here began a chain reaction that was far from tidy, as word got out that my mother-in-law had something big to announce. She began to capture everyone's attention, listen up, everyone, I have something important to announce because you all know my birthday is approaching she began reading from a piece of paper she had taken out since this is such a momentous occasion i felt compelled to share with you the details of my preparations i propose that we go on a vacation to hawaii a confirmation of the travel to hawaii was made in the paper i love the sound of that excuse me stunning jenny going to hawaii has always been a dream of mine the news is fantastic my goodness my Mouth is watering from excitement. Words fail me, much obliged, mom, oh, so you're not planning on showing up, my darling, what on earth are you referring to? This was never intended, I made some last minute arrangements and managed to cancel her ticket before they gave us extra charges, oh, so she went ahead and canceled my ticket even though I had already paid for it, tell me, mom, why is this woman so enraged by me? Could you please clarify what you mean? Amidst the cacophony of angry words being hurled at one another, it appeared. That only Jack and I remained mute throughout, Maria eventually said, All right, all right, fine, after some nagging and prodding for an adequate enough reason, I'll explain why I think Jenny should skip this family gathering. You all know that I'm aging a bit, and I've made up my mind that I want to spend the rest of my life surrounded by the individuals who mean the most to me. Jenny simply does not belong on that list, unfortunately, wow. Is that so, mom? Why are you acting strangely, so far, I'm feeling well. Please, don't be so rude to me, I simply want to make it clear that Jenny is not a blood relative and so cannot be regarded as part of our family, then Jack too shouldn't be able to leave, according to that reasoning, would he, he isn't considered family, according to what you're saying, since he is a member of the family, though, we can all see through it. She is considered a member of the family ever since Hugo and Jenny were married, I mean, it's definitely different with Jack. You are aware of how wonderful he is, he has always been here, and he is our little angel, I simply do not feel comfortable having Jenny accompany us on this vacation because she has not, plus, I get to choose since it's my birthday, Jenny, we need to go immediately no, even my adversary, who had been attempting to suppress a grin the whole time, couldn't help but notice how forcefully I replied no, but right then, she wiped the expression off her face, Maria, you've made it clear since the beginning that you do not like me. And every day for the past three years, I have endured your insufferable, your behavior is invisible to everyone, your narcissism is obvious, and you act as if no one is noticing, since you are only here for a short while, you should be careful with your language around me, actually, I'm on my way out the door, but I must say this first, I looked across to my supportive husband, who was furiously staring at his mom, my love for you is unconditional and I have tried to stay strong for you for a very long time, honey, however, I have come to realize that no matter how much I try to fit in with this family, your mother will never accept me, this trip is too good to pass up, despite her insanity, your mother is still your mother, you love her, and she loves you back, therefore you must leave, I'll be alright, so there's no need to fret, after that, I looked across at my mother-in-law, who was clearly taken aback by what I had said, unfortunately for you, I have feelings for your son, and I have no plans to leave, even if you believe you can ignore me, I will be by your side, since I believe you're completely enamored with me, I can guarantee that even when you visit Hawaii, thoughts of me will cross your mind, what a brazen act, ideally, I'd slap you right this second, my work is far from done, I have no idea why you are so preoccupied with me, it's like you can't get enough of putting me down, even if you weren't deserving, all I've done is be patient and kind to you, however, I've had enough, so, you're not interested in taking me to Hawaii, very well, do you really believe I am not related to you, very well, even so, you can count on my unwavering presence, Hugo, Kyle, and even Jack can count on my undying support for as long as I have breath in my body, no way, not ever, it was then that it hit me, I had managed to silence her, she seemed to be trying to find the words to express herself. But her mind was holding her back, she kept her jaw hanging wide, at last I got her to stop talking. 
My husband and I exchanged pecks on the cheek as I started to leave after saying our goodbyes to the rest of the family, let me drive you home, certainly, I will not let you hail a cab, my safety is not a concern of yours, honey, I am deeply grateful for your love for me, and I love you back, still, I'll be alright, you need to talk about a trip, alright, I will believe you if you claim to be fine, remember to bring your purse, too, where is my wallet, in the kitchen, I stashed it, I believe Maria went into the kitchen to collect herself after everything that had happened when I got there, I would have acted similarly after receiving such a scolding, no need to be concerned about me, my love, all I'm doing is gathering my belongings, wow, whip that up in no time, you are not welcome in my home, I said, she proclaimed, it was unbelievable to me that she had spoken those words to me, that was it. She was so furious that she didn't dare look at me as I left the room, I quickly retrieved my handbag and scoffed at her absurdity, I happened to check over the piece of paper next to it and saw that it was written in Maria's handwriting, at the time, I was feeling a little resentful about not traveling, so I thought it must have been a memo outlining the trip schedule, I was curious to see how much fun I was going to miss, so I peeked, upon grabbing it, I commenced reading the paper, you have always been like a son to me, my beloved Jack, and you know how much I adore you, it seems to be a letter addressed to Jack, a little off-putting, but I suppose it's considerate, the more I read, the more my inquisitive eyes wanted to know, I will always be grateful for all the support you've given me, I feel like the love we had is gone, even with my kid Hugo, it's something I'm ashamed to say, I need to hear what she says, is her love for Hugo less than her love for Jack, it just isn't possible, with the start of each new line, I persisted in reading the article, as I persisted in reading, my amazement grew, it was unbelievable to me, unpacking that letter was a huge relief, even though it wasn't my job to do so, I was so confused after reading the letter that I paced the kitchen, trying to figure out what to do next, my realization came at that moment, sitting in that room were all the individuals who needed to be informed about the presence of this letter, this is the moment to take action, if there ever was one, to rule out the possibility that I was hallucinating, I read the letter again, it was exactly the same as what I had read before, I thought, when I emerged from the kitchen, I saw exactly three sets of eyes staring back at me, my wife is attempting to put you through a lot, and I'm really sorry, Jenny, we will take you to Hawaii, so there's no need to worry, the fact that I'm in the room has put her in a funk for the time being, but have no fear, I will persuade her to abandon her plans, Kyle reassured me, don't worry, I will change her mind, he didn't explain what had gotten into, her lately, rest assured, Kyle, I am not a cause for concern, everything is well with me, in fact, it's perfect, I've discovered some fascinating news that I must tell everyone about, but Hugo in particular requires my immediate attention, their ears perked up, Hugo and Jack, a look of concern flashed across Hugo's face, and I could see it, I suppose he assumed I was going to ask for a divorce since this was getting to be too much, when I would vent to him about his mother, he would usually echo, my feelings and ask how I put up with her constant bickering, I would explain to him that I would endure anything for him and that my love for him was too strong to let him go, when I didn't see the wicked witch of the west in her usual haunt, I had to inquire, where is Maria, it is essential that she also attends this, you yelled at her, and now she seems to be in a bit of a funk, as I said before, she mentioned that she had a slight headache and planned to take a nap upstairs to help alleviate it, it will be some time before she's ready, you are aware of her feelings regarding her beauty sleep, all too frequently, Maria would annoy other people with her awkward and pointless routines and regimes, and I was well acquainted with them, I let out an exasperated breath, this is just really important, she has to be here, it's okay, Jenny, you can tell us, and we'll inform her, considering what I knew, I was hesitant to act when she woke up, I was hoping to witness the flush of shame that would spread across her cheeks, my dear, I think it would be best if you told us right away, you know Hugo suffers from anxiety, so it would be detrimental to keep him waiting, that's all right, Kyle said, indeed, Hugo's nervousness may reach crippling levels at times, causing him to visibly twitch in anticipation very well, I'll show you what I discovered in the kitchen as I gathered my belongings and prepared to depart, listen, I came upon something fascinating that I believe you should all be aware of, I took out the piece of paper I had, discovered and started reading it, you are my son in every aspect, and I love you more than words can express, my little Jack, I will always be grateful for the care and affection you have given me, 
I feel like the love we had is gone, even with my kid Hugo, it's something I'm ashamed to say, her words make no sense, my god, what on earth is this, reading persisted for me, hey, I feel like we used to have a lot of common ground, but lately I've been thinking that maybe Jenny is to blame, his. Attention has been completely absorbed by that woman ever since he wed her, since he doesn't care about me, I can't say that I love him either, you are my son, and I love you very much, so, I'm updating my will to leave all of my possessions to you instead than Hugo, and I wanted to let you know about it, at this point, it doesn't matter to me if it hurts him or not, my affection for him has been poisoned by that awful Jenny girl, that is who it is, I pray this letter finds you in good health, as much as it hurts me to confess it. I just couldn't bear the thought of seeing the look of rejection on your face if I tried to bring it up in person, you probably won't approve, because I know how much you love Hugo, like he's your brother, however, it is of little concern to me personally, everything I own, including my house, cars, money, and small enterprises, is at your disposal, whether you prefer it or not, they are all legally yours. Feel free to give me a call at your convenience if you would want to continue this conversation, I am eagerly awaiting your reply, your second mom, I will adore you no matter what, a whirlwind of conflicting feelings hit my eyes as I lifted my eyes from the letter, Kyle appeared on the verge of tears, Jack appeared taken aback, but Hugo, Hugo seemed like he was about to do a heinous act, she stated all that, it's unbelievable, is this the seriousness she's aiming for? This whole ordeal is being carried out because of Jenny, she would leave me out of her will simply to spite. Jenny and me since she dislikes Jenny so much, she has completely gone insane, I am at a loss for words in regards to you all, it has progressed sufficiently, this woman's toxic behavior has finally gotten to me, so, what's our plan right then, a thought came to me, after waiting for one week, the planned trip to Hawaii finally arrived, upon awakening, Maria saw a letter from her spouse resting on the table by her side, good morning, beautiful, we thought it would be best to give you a little more time to relax and rejuvenate, I've taken care of all your luggage, to locate us, simply go to the airport, Maria consequently prepared herself and made her way to the airport, where she anxiously searched for the individuals who were supposed to accompany her on the celebratory journey, nobody would answer when she called them, she thought they couldn't answer her call as they were already on the plane, with the hope of meeting them in Hawaii, she hurriedly boarded her flight, she made it through the 12-hour flight and then video phoned Kyle as soon as she touched down. To Kyle, hello, oh my god, where are you all hiding, it was a sweet concept, by the way, and I noticed your letter when I got up late, I would have called you all before getting to the airport if I hadn't gotten up so late, but nobody answered, it makes no difference anymore, we're in Hawaii now, I just thought you boarded already, how incredible, let the celebrations commence by informing me of your whereabouts, that won't be happening, Maria, what, what, can you explain, confess your whereabouts, to me, I'm at home, what, what, it seems like my words reached you, at the moment, I am at home, here at home, we are everyone, greetings, everybody, it was in Kyle's house, at the same dining table where we had learned the terrible news a week earlier, that Jack, Hugo, myself, and he were all gathered, as revealed by his phone, Maria wanted to know why we were staying at home, and Kyle clarified that Jenny had given us some interesting information a week before, it has been since then that we have. All come to the conclusion that being in Florida with Jenny is better than anywhere else with Maria, the news caught Maria off guard, and she wondered if we had learned anything new, she demanded, accusingly, whether she was to be left out of the will, she was startled and wanted to know how we found out about it, Call told her that Jenny had discovered a letter in the kitchen, Jenny accused Maria of making matters worse by denying knowing about the letter, while Maria denied having any knowledge of it, after Jack verified that everyone had perused the letter, Maria tried to shift the blame by claiming Jenny was making everything up, but Jenny was unwavering in her criticism of Maria, calling her pitiful and accusing her of being dishonest, Carl stepped in, interrupting Maria and expressing his dissatisfaction with her behavior, he told her that her birthday would be spent in Hawaii by alone, suffering for her transgressions, we were all glad when Kyle ended the call, despite Maria's pleading for understanding. 
We all found the situation hilarious, and laughter broke out at the dinner table witnessing Maria's reaction of shock upon discovering her deceit was revealed added excitement to the moment, Maria attempted to get Kyle to accompany her on her vacation by calling him multiple times, but she ultimately spent the time alone herself, dealing with the fallout of her choices, but he insisted on denying it, saying that they would have to set certain boundaries for their marriage to go on when she came back, Maria's tone changed dramatically, she became extremely sorry and agitated, which was completely out of character for her. Even Hugo was taken aback by this shift, and he made it clear that Maria needed to change her attitude if she wanted to stay in his life, otherwise, he was ready to walk away for good, Hugo threatened Maria with total separation for even the slightest display of disrespect in the future. And their relationship remained unstable as a result, after seeing that his Friendliness was fueling Maria's destructive conduct, Jack made the decision to quit being excessively polite to her, this put Maria's relationships with her three closest loved ones in jeopardy and caused her to have a terrible experience in a stunning location, she is now confronted with the task of improving herself after her relationships with all three of them grew strained. When I needed time to think about whether or not I could forgive Maria for the wrongs she had done to me, I sent her. A note explaining my situation, regardless of her cries for help, I stood firm in my belief that she was solely responsible for her current situation and would have to deal with the males in her life as a result, I hope Maria has learned her lesson because she is still trying to fix the connection she ruined in a different conversation, when I mentioned that my dad had retired, he interrupted me, suggesting that he must now be dependent on me for his living, before I could finish my sentence. He passed judgment insinuating that my family may have trapped his son for our wealth. Shocked by his mean-spirited comment, I reacted, expressing disbelief at the idea that someone could be so malicious. I found Michael's behavior disgusting, as he consistently made me feel inferior due to my financial status. Let me share a bit about myself. I am Amanda, a 28-year-old residing in California with my boyfriend Steve, who is also 28. We met three years ago in law school and quickly developed a strong connection. Since graduating, we have been living together, I pursued a career as an attorney in a consulting company, while Steve works at a bank, six months ago, during a holiday, Steve proposed to me, and I happily accepted, we decided to inform our parents about our wedding plans, scheduling a meeting with my parents first, followed by Steve's parents. It was our first time introducing each other to our parents for personal reasons, excited about our plans, I immediately called my mom to share the news. She congratulated us and expressed her happiness, we planned to visit my parents the following weekend and Steve's parents the week after. The next week, Steve and I drove to my parents' house in Sacramento, where I was born and raised. My father, Mark Johnson, is a retired judge, and my mother is a homemaker, though Steve was a bit nervous on the way. I reassured him, mentioning that my parents are easygoing. Upon entering the house, my mom warmly welcomed us, and Steve greeted her with a nervous smile, I understood the tension between Steve and his father, Michael. When we arrived at Steve's parents' home, Steve warned me about the possibility of his father behaving arrogantly due to their strained relationship. As we entered, Steve's mother, Catherine, warmly greeted us with a hug, she appeared kind and composed, leading us to the lawn outside where Michael awaited our arrival, Steve's tension was palpable, and he had previously mentioned his father's desire for him to join the real estate business. A path Steve was not inclined to follow, Steve's father, Michael Lewis, was a businessman, and the strained relationship between them stemmed from Steve's reluctance to join the family business, Steve had opted to pursue a career in law, a decision that didn't align with Michael's aspirations. During our time in Steve's parents' home, I could sense the tension in the air, Steve's father, Michael, maintained a formal demeanor, and Steve's unease was apparent, despite the discomfort, we engaged in polite conversation with Steve's mother, Catherine, trying to ease the atmosphere as we left. Steve seemed relieved that the meeting was over and I could empathize with the challenging dynamics between him and his father. The contrast between the warm reception at my parents' house and the tension at Steve's parents' home left a lasting impression on both of us. Steve's strained relationship with his father added complexity to our journey towards marriage as we navigated the challenges posed 
By family dynamics and personal aspirations, I pictured him as a wealthy man with a tendency to flaunt his riches, and, surprisingly, he turned out to be exactly that, he sat with folded arms, his rigid posture indicating lingering anger towards Steve, when I made eye contact with Michael, I greeted him warmly, but he merely nodded without a smile, gesturing to the chair across from him after settling in. Catherine broke the awkward silence, complimenting my appearance and upbringing, grateful. For her kind words, I reciprocated the compliment, expressing that I was born and raised in Sacramento and worked as an attorney at a consulting firm. Upon hearing about my profession, Michael's expression changed, and he interrupted, questioning why my father couldn't provide for me if he earned well. Startled, I explained that my father was retired, but Michael, without allowing me to finish, insinuated that my father must be dependent on me for his retirement. Indignant, I clarified, but... Michael persisted, suggesting that poor families often use their daughters to trap wealthy men for inheritance. Stunned, I refuted the accusation, feeling disgusted by Michael's judgment and inferior due to his perception of my economic status eager to leave. Steve urged me to stay seated for a moment. Turning to Michael, he dismissed the taunts, asserting that they came to share news of our upcoming marriage. Michael, concerned about who would foot the ceremony bill, was met with Steve's response that it wasn't. His business, despite Steve's defense, Michael insisted, claiming knowledge that my parents couldn't afford a wedding ceremony, the responsibility ultimately falls on you to bear the burden, doesn't it? It's a matter between Amanda and me regarding who will cover the ceremony expenses. You've fallen into her trap. First, she convinced you to leave this house and enroll in that law college, and now this wedding, Steve, agitated, began shouting at Michael, clarifying that he pursued law because he was not interested in running the real estate business, he emphasized that he didn't even know Amanda when he made the decision, Steve pointed out that he could have returned home after graduation, but Amanda wasn't part of the equation at that time Michael's unreasonable accusations continued, claiming that Steve was running his life by marrying a poor girl and insinuating that Amanda and her parents had trapped him. Steve intervened, urging Michael to stop, defending Amanda's parents as kind. People not interested in wealth, the argument intensified, and Michael was criticized for his past choices, including his disapproval of Steve studying law and working for a modest salary instead of joining the family business. Catherine attempted to defuse the situation, asking them to stop, but Steve stood up, stormed out of the lawn, and I followed him. Catherine ran behind us, imploring Steve to halt. But he ignored her and continued walking towards the exit of the bungalow I glanced back and noticed Catherine running towards us with tears in her eyes. Stopping, she reached out and held my arms, pleading for me to ask Steve to pause for a while. She shared that the last time he left in a similar manner, they didn't meet for several years, feeling sorry for her, as she was not at fault. I stood there in silence, I struggled to find the right words as I, too, was upset by Michael's words. I reassured her that once Steve was in a better mood, I would ask him to call her. Kindly have him give me a call, over and over, she pleaded, sure, you take care, okay, in an effort to reassure her, I responded, as I departed from the location, she continued to weep, as I stepped out of the bungalow, I noticed Steve standing by the car, ready to greet me, after the events at his place left us both heartbroken and fatigued, we drove silently back home, Steve told me his dad had acted inappropriately after dinner and apologized to me, my father's behavior was wrong, and I want you to know that, honey, he acknowledged his knowledge that is harsh, comments had harmed you, hey, I get it, you're not to blame, still, his haughtiness is something I just can't get past, who is capable of such impoliteness, he is your father, and I know it's wrong to speak ill of him, but he treated me badly, a cruel guy, he has always been, my mom had to go through a lot since he's so conceited, the question of how she has tolerated your father for so long is perplexing, I remarked, dad appears to be taking advantage of mom's lenient and caring disposition which she has always possessed, I empathize with your mother, Steve confessed, I empathize with her as well, she has always loved and supported me, but when I'm unhappy with dad, I cut ties with her, she made a mistake, and you should not penalize her for it, dial her number immediately, when you stormed out of the house in a huff, she was understandably distressed, I proposed, I agree with you, I will contact her, I appreciate your backing, Steve remarked, he calmed his mom down by calling her, but I was still in disbelief. 
I told Steve my worries after he spoke with Michael's mom about the possibility that he would offend my parents before our wedding, even contemplating bringing his dad to the wedding, he reassured me that he would find a solution but I just couldn't bring myself to say anything publicly about my worry, we started planning our wedding, and I always wanted to be married on my parents' anniversary in the church where they were married. It was a dream of mine, when Steve and I first started dating. I told him about this request, he thought it was funny at first, but he eventually agreed because he didn't think it was a big deal, we booked a resort near Sacramento for the wedding feast six months before the big day as we slowly got ready for it to help get to know each other's families better, my dad proposed that we have supper with Steve's parents before the wedding. Steve and I were both wary since we knew Michael could ruin the party in an effort to allay their suspicions over our Unwillingness to host a family reunion, we informed my parents that Steve's father was often required to travel for work, after Steve told his mom the wedding details, she was overjoyed and couldn't contain her excitement, she showed real generosity by contacting me on several occasions to inquire about the wedding plans, I was already nervous about seeing Michael on my wedding day. And that nervousness only increased as the big day drew near, on more than one occasion, I considered requesting that Steve not invite Michael, but, I was afraid that doing so might cause suspicion and Catherine might not be permitted to go, I told Steve that I was worried his father's haughtiness might ruin our special day when I confronted him about my concerns, this worries me as well, what if, when the visitors are around, he makes fun of my family, Steve nodded in agreement. He calmed me by saying that his father would deal with the matter properly as a judge if the need ever came, Steve disagreed with. Me when I proposed telling my parents because he was worried they would worry too much. He promised me that he would prevent his dad from acting inappropriately in the event of an emergency, I was still not persuaded, even after he reassured me, my darling, I promise to stand by your side through thick and thin, take heart, I felt better knowing that my father, with his background as a judge, could manage any scenario because of his soothing answer, in the end. Michael's haughty belief that we were trying to trap Steve in exchange for his inheritance was unfounded, there was no basis for the assertion, we had reserved a hotel for our guests in Sacramento the day before our wedding, so we drove there the day before, according to Steve's mom, they planned to skip the reception and head straight to the church for the nuptials, one of the most joyous moments of my life was walking down the aisle with my dad, a mix of nerves and excitement coursing through me. I watched as Mark and Catherine entered the church while the vows were being exchanged, Catherine, accompanied by my parents, appeared elated as they were led to the front row, Michael sat there, expressionless, I was so overjoyed to have my parents support when I wed Steve that I no longer gave a hoot about his displeasure, we returned to the hotel for a short nap before the wedding feast because the ceremony had gone off without a hitch, just out of curiosity. I wanted to know if my mom got the opportunity to meet Steve's parents. Apart from the traditional hello, she told me, they didn't have a chance to talk to them, due to their late arrival and my parents' preoccupation with preparations, Steve's parents, and I did not have much time to chat, having said that, my mom did say that Michael appeared distressed, my nerves getting the best of me, I asked whether he had spoken, actually, he said absolutely nothing, I repeat, he said absolutely nothing, our greetings were returned by Catherine. The reason behind his illness remains a mystery to me, my mother said, I said, oh, okay, but my voice was filled with disquiet. Upon assuring my mother that the situation between Steve's parents was satisfactory, she made the assumption that Michael could require some rest before the wedding meal due to the lengthy flight. To my astonishment, Steve's parents showed up to the wedding reception, even though I had anticipated that they wouldn't. While Catherine warmly welcomed everyone, Michael stood rigidly with his arms crossed. On the contrary, he informed Steve, You've become a puppet, rather than rewarding us, you made. The decision to have the wedding at her residence rather than ours, no, sir, not today, my wedding feast is here, to spare it, Steve begged, Steve, you already had your life damaged by this girl and her family, they insisted that you shell out a fortune for this extravagant wedding feast, Michael warned that if things keep going the way they are, people like you will end up homeless, why are you treating our son this way, Michael, Catherine asked with an embarrassed expression, interrupting. Michael, what a humiliation I am unconcerned since these people are not my guests, 
but they have started to show up nevertheless, in order for my parents to attend to the details, Catherine drew him away, they greeted Steve's parents after a while, greetings, Lewis family, unfortunately, we were unable to exchange greetings at the church, their son Steve's parents wanted to make sure he was having fun, greetings, Johnson's, the kind welcome is much appreciated, indeed, we are thoroughly enjoying, the evening, Michael remarked with an artificial grin, there was no opportunity for a formal meeting, my name is Michael Lewis, and I manage a real estate company that generates over $10 million in revenue every year, he went on to say, that is quite remarkable, I am glad to hear that, Steve's dad said, yeah, yeah, I know, Michael quipped in an interruption, I bet you were astounded, your retirement has been announced to me by Amanda, I know it's tough for you, for what reason is it challenging, as a reward for my service. The government has provided me with a generous pension. I'm a retired judge, not a retired janitor. My dad added with a dash of humor. Is he a former judge? That is surprising, isn't it? Was it because you thought I was a cleaner? My dad couldn't help but chuckle out loud. Well, now that you know, do you have anything to say? My dad asked in a comical manner once he realized Michael was trying to boast about his money. Yeah, I'm good. I swear, thanks. Michael mumbled to himself. Steve's dad kept his cool and made light of the situation, leaving Michael speechless and pallid, that is not something I assumed, I had no idea you were involved with government services, Michael whispered back, now that you know, do you have anything to say, my dad inquired, yeah, I'm good, I swear, Michael barely uttered a word of gratitude, Steve was correct, my dad did a good job dealing with Michael, Michael was astonished to learn that my father was a retired judge at Sacramento court, he had previously made me feel inferior by assuming I was poor, permit us to attend to other guests for a moment, as they departed, my parents kindly requested that I savor the meal, sure, please go ahead, we'll take care of ourselves, we replied, my parents went to greet their friends, and Michael pulled Steve aside, saying, why didn't you tell me her dad is a retired judge, Amanda wanted to say something, but Michael didn't let her finish, now please excuse us, we want to enjoy our wedding dinner, Steve said, Michael's face turned red in anger, he had thought he was the wealthiest person at the party, and my parents were poor, now, seeing renowned government officials and bureaucrats joining the party with my parents, his ego was hurt, he had no one left to unleash his frustration on other than Catherine, he looked frustrated for the rest of the evening but fate to smile when my parents introduced him to high-profile guests, eventually, he left the party early, forcing Catherine to join him, as she had wanted, to spend time with us. However, Michael didn't allow her to stay, I felt sorry for her, after a few months, I learned that Catherine had decided to divorce Michael because she could no longer tolerate his dominance, Steve informed me that Michael didn't initiate the business, it belonged to his paternal grandfather, who happened to be Catherine's father as Catherine was the sole daughter. Her father handed over the business to Michael before retiring to the countryside, despite Michael running the business outwardly. The true owner was Catherine, she took the ancestral business from Michael and handed it over to her first cousin, the bungalow where Steve's parents resided was also Catherine's ancestral home, following their divorce, Michael was evicted from the house, leaving him with no place to live, according to Catherine, Michael's parents and siblings had severed all ties with him long ago due to his insulting remarks about their financial situation, now, Michael is doing odd jobs to make ends meet, I don't sympathize with him because he destroyed all his relationships with his shallow nature and arrogance about wealth that wasn't even his, knowing all this, I am convinced that Michael married Catherine solely for her wealth, considering everyone to be as greedy as himself, Steve and I frequently visit Catherine in her bungalow, where she has started organic farming in the backyard, cultivating fruits and vegetables, she brings fresh produce for us from her farm whenever she visits, I'm Delighted to see her living independently and happily on her own terms, free from the control of her former cruel husband, Steve, and I lead a content and prosperous life. One day, our son Eric eagerly asked, Hey, mommy, you're back, yay, where's daddy? Eric seemed uncomfortable with the question, looked down, and replied, Um, I don't know, concerned, I said, Love, are you keeping secrets with mommy? Eric chose not to say anything, however, he kept looking down at the floor anxiously and I sensed that something was wrong. I immediately called up my husband, David, where are you? I came for a vacation with our son, I said, feeling concerned, 
after the call, we swiftly packed our bags and left the house. Hello, my name is Caroline, and I'm 40 years old, I am married to David, who is 42 years old, and we have been married for the last 10 years, we initially met at the same office and fell in love, eventually getting married. After two years of marriage, our son Eric was born, and our family seemed complete, Eric is. Now eight years old, shortly after our marriage, David received a better job opportunity from a different company, leading him to switch jobs, I continued working at the same company, and now I hold a senior position that requires me to travel for a few days each month for business trips. When Eric was three years old, I was offered a promotion with the condition that I would have to travel for business purposes. I was hesitant as Eric was too young to be left alone, but David assured me, it's all right, my. Darling, I will ensure Eric's well-being, is that so, he lacks proportion, without a doubt, also, he is my son, in any case, a few days will pass, thanks to David's encouragement, I took the promotion, and he was always there to watch after Eric when I was away on business, everything was going swimmingly for us until my father-in-law gave us a call, hey there, D leaving the company is something I've been considering, the pressure was becoming too much for me to bear, is everything okay, dad, may I? ask you something, David said, the only thing is that I'm getting on in years, it's about time you took over the business, his father said with a touch of gentility, you were anticipating this, David, up until this point, I have allowed you to do everything you wanted, his dad said, there is, however, one thing you owe it to your family, dad, I refuse to be coerced, David protested, no need to feel pressured, consider it, at what point in time would you expect to have completed the job, his father, firmly believed that the business would provide him with the freedom to fully enjoy his retirement years. However, my only heir is you, dad, his father threatened to sell the company if he was told that his son would not run it, it was not what I intended, David said, all right, then end your employment with the company and become a part of the business, his father proposed, however, dad, you've been a very effective business manager for a long time, I'm worried I won't be able to handle it well. David said, the more you run it, the more you'd learn, he was reassured by his father, who shared his lack of commercial acumen until he struck out on his own, all right, dad, unhappy to go, David reluctantly agreed to inform his employer and finish off his duties there, despite his contentment with his profession, he was mentally prepared to take over the family firm, even though the transition happened sooner than anticipated. I observed a subtle shift in David's demeanor not long after he started working for the family company, he frequently spent weekends away from home, returned home late, and spent evenings alone with his phone, after enduring this routine for a few of months, I finally snapped, I made up my mind to go after him, David, is everything fine with you, excuse me? I inquired, I don't understand, a shift in your demeanor has been noticeable over the past few months, and I've been worried about it, a shift. What on earth are you referring to? As if trying to sidestep the question, David said. His lack of knowledge infuriated me. Pretend you're unaware of what I'm referring to, every. Every day, you're tardy getting home, I went after him and told him that he was too busy on his phone on days when he was early to hang out with Eric or myself. The reason this is happening is that I am very busy, David said with a severe tone, unfortunately. I am no longer employed by a company that allows me to clock off at 7.00 pm, now it's my concern, even when I go home. I still need to make time for it, over the phone, I need to collaborate with several departments, on weekends, what? Happens, we do occasionally have employment on weekends as well. Since I was at a loss for words, I excused myself to go outside and collect my thoughts, I remained unconvinced despite the validity of David's arguments, David and I were becoming increasingly distant, and I felt a chill that I couldn't put my finger on, regardless, I decided to give him a chance and let him get a handle on his new company duties for a while, on top of that. David had shown himself to be a loving parent to Eric by watching him on my business trips and treating him to many vacations when he was free. After a couple of years, David's business took over his life to the point that he would go days without returning home, our chatter dried up, and I wondered if my job was to blame for the growing distance between us, even though we lived under the same roof, because I didn't have someone to talk to, I felt completely alone, so as not to put undue strain on my parents, who were in their late 70s. I kept my problems to myself, I lost touch with most of my pals. 
Because of all the work and family commitments, David's influence in my life diminished to an almost insignificant degree. Despite his immaturity, my son Eric was a source of comfort to me during my tough times. Although I found solace and joy in his company, I have recently observed Eric's disengagement and deteriorating performance on our monthly assessments. There were worries about his obsessive gaming habits. Even though David had been spoiling Eric with a plethora of electronic games and autonomous vehicle toys, he encountered pushback when he introduced yet another pricey video game, I voiced my disapproval, saying that Eric didn't need any more toys or games since he had so many already in a defensive reaction, David asked whether he couldn't give his son presents, I rebutted by bringing up Eric's declining grades and gaming habits. Highlighting the significance of responsible parenting for his cognitive development, David downplayed my concerns, saying Eric would figure things out on his own and implying that I was picking on his carelessness. When I reflected on David's role as Eric's father and how he voluntarily looked after Eric while I was away on business, I was surprised, you have responsibilities too, didn't you encourage me to take the promotion while you volunteered to care for Eric, my memory served to remind David, indeed, I was the one, all you do is gripe, even though you should be appreciative of my support, he shot back defensively, I've always been grateful for your support, that's why I'm still in this house despite. Your cold behavior, I told myself, stop acting helpless, I've had enough, I yelled out, my frustration evident, guess what, I've had enough of you, I don't have any compassion or gratitude for you, I asserted, David responded with anger, accusing me of being ungrateful, he stated that women like me could never be happy or keep their husbands pleased, these harsh words, a departure from his usual demeanor, pierced my heart, and I found myself crying in pain, I retreated to the bathroom, locking, Myself and Eric, overhearing the argument, knocked on the door, crying and calling for me. Eventually, I washed my face, came out, and hugged him, trying to reassure him. When I comforted Eric, I momentarily forgot my pain, making dinner and putting him to sleep. Despite the emotional turmoil, I prepared for my business trip the next morning, leaving a note of my travel details on David's study table. This had become a routine since our relationship had cooled. The note served as a way to ensure. David took responsibility for Eric during my absence, the next morning, I embarked on my scheduled trip, but the recent confrontations with David lingered in my mind, making it difficult to concentrate on my work. On the second day of my three-day trip, I began feeling feverish and weak. Deciding to cut the trip short, I contacted my manager, explaining that I was unwell. My manager coordinated with the travel department, arranging my return flight for the same day upon reaching home, anticipating quality time with my son. I discovered the main door locked, and the lights were off. Using the duplicate key, I entered to find the living room dark, turning on the lights and heading upstairs to Eric's room, I found him playing video games on his bed, excitedly, Eric greeted me, but when I inquired about David's whereabouts in the dark house, he seemed uneasy, avoiding eye contact. He mumbled that he didn't know when David had left and that he was asked not to tell me anything concerned, I called David, questioning. His absence during our supposed vacation, shockingly, David lied about his location, the call, on speakerphone, revealed the truth to both Eric and me, staring at him in disbelief, I hung up, prompting Eric to start sobbing, in the aftermath, Eric confided in me, revealing the unsettling truth, he disclosed that whenever I went on a trip, David left him alone in the house, the revelation was heartbreaking, I comforted Eric, holding him close, and asked when this had started, he explained that. When he was younger, David took care of him, but now he was left alone, with David even locking him inside the house, he keeps food in the fridge for me to eat and gives me video games to play, daddy comes late at night and leaves again in the morning, Eric revealed, the revelation about David's actions while I was away left me stunned, and I couldn't believe what my little son had been enduring. I blamed myself for leaving him at David's mercy, why didn't you tell me? Honey, excuse me, I inquired. Eric explained that his father used to leave him for a few hours, bringing chocolates and toys, but now he was away for the entire day, David had made him promise not to tell me anything, and he kept his promise to avoid breaking his word, I'm sorry, mommy, dad got me the latest video games, and I kept my promise not to tell you anything, I'm sorry, baby, that you had to go through so much, Eric apologized, hearing that David had rewarded him for keeping this distressing secret left me disgusted, I knew I couldn't stay in that house any longer,
Subjecting my child to such a terrible situation, we immediately packed our bags and left. After dropping Eric at my aunt's place, I hired an investigating agency to look into David's actions. I also went to David's parents and shared the entire incident with them. My mother-in-law struggled to believe that David could do such things, don't get me wrong, Caroline, maybe there's a misunderstanding. It's not wise to make such a big decision based on Eric's words, he's just a small kid, she suggested, intending to advise caution, however, in my furious state, I couldn't comprehend her intentions, do you think Eric is making up all these things, if David was not wrong, why did he lie to me about being on vacation with Eric, I retorted impatiently, I proceeded to share more details about David's behavior, including his distant attitude, late nights, and weekends spent away from home. My father-in-law interrupted, stop, Brianna, Caroline is right, I never anticipated that David would transform in this manner following his entry into the business, some of my senior employees subtly hinted at David's growing closeness with his assistant, but I dismissed it as mere gossip, I believed people enjoyed spreading such workplace rumors, I had faith in David's maturity and loyalty to our family, thinking he was beyond having an affair, he loved you and Eric so deeply that I couldn't fathom such a betrayal, now, reflecting on it, I regret not taking those hints seriously, please find, it in your heart to forgive me, Caroline, when I sat there in stunned silence, Brian shared my disbelief, we were both devastated by the revelation that David, who had been perceived as an ideal son, husband, and father, had disappointed everyone, despite the growing distance between us, I never suspected David of having an affair, naively, I attributed the cooling of our relationship to our busy schedules, assuming that once Eric grew up, we would rediscover our love during our retirement, upon leaving my in-law's house. David made attempts to contact me, likely prompted by a confrontation with his parents, ignoring his calls, I moved in with my aunt temporarily and began the search for a new home. After a few days, the investigative agency confirmed the affair, with David involved with his assistant, Lily, he would skip work to spend entire days at her place, especially when I was away on trips faced with the undeniable evidence. I engaged a lawyer and sent divorce papers, along with the photo evidence obtained. From the agency, Lily, portrayed as a victim who had been divorced due to her ex-husband's alleged infidelity during her pregnancy, turned out to be deceitful, the agency revealed her true colors, discovering that her ex-husband divorced her without alimony or child support because he contested the paternity of the child, DNA testing confirmed the child was not his, through my lawyer. I forwarded these details to David, who, devastated by the truth, ended the relationship with Lily, he accused. Lily of breaking into her house, David, unwilling to proceed with the divorce, expressed his love for Eric and pleaded with the lawyer for a second chance, he admitted to being influenced by Lily and disclosed that locking Eric at home was her idea, as her own daughter stayed alone when Lily went to work, while I might have considered giving him another chance if only I were the one hurt. It now involved the safety and upbringing of my child, I couldn't raise Eric with a father who manipulated. His son with bribes and lies, despite enduring years of betrayal, I remained resolute in seeking a divorce, David's infidelity had shattered the trust one once had in him, and forgiveness was no longer an option, rejecting any settlement, I stood firm in my decision, my father-in-law, acknowledging David's mistakes, apologized and supported me throughout, the office became aware of David's affair and the impending divorce causing my father-in-law to remove both David and Lily from the company, he took charge for a few years before selling it off for a substantial sum. David was disowned, with his name removed from the will, and my father-in-law directed the inheritance towards Eric, facing societal judgment, David relocated to another part of the city, shunned by neighbors who disapproved of his affair with his assistant, meanwhile, I secured a transfer to a different department that eliminated the need for extensive travel, I hired a full-time nanny to care for Eric. Managing my household and work more efficiently, with enough savings for retirement, I plan to quit my job in a few years, aiming to enjoy life to the fullest with my son, my aspiration is for Eric to grow up as an educated and responsible individual on a separate note, at the age of 32, I, a female, lived with my husband for five years before things took a turn for the worse, initially, our relationship was great, but changes occurred after my husband Bernard received a promotion. His demeanor became arrogant and distant, concerned, I confided in my trusted mother-in-law, expressing 
My confusion about his behavior, despite my attempts to discuss the issue with Bernard, he dismissed it repeatedly, acting as if everything was fine, I even suggested couples counseling as a more serious measure, he gets really angry, oh goodness, that doesn't sound at all like my precious Bernard, maybe it's because you cuddle him too much, and those rose-colored glasses prevent you from seeing the truth anyway. Things were going okay for some time after he got his big promotion, a couple of Months into enduring his insufferable behavior, I found some alarming news on Bernard's phone while cleaning the bedroom, I noticed he had left his phone dangerously close to the edge of the bedside table, moving it, I saw a text from someone named Pizza Hut, how peculiar, I thought to myself, my curiosity got the better of me, and upon opening the message, I discovered horrid things, my husband was cheating on me. Numerous texts and inappropriate pictures flooded my eyes, overwhelming me, at that moment i heard heavy footsteps approaching the door quickly locking the phone and putting it back bernard entered demanding to know the whereabouts of his socks they're here darling i was just tidying up the room a bit i replied trying to hide the turmoil inside why do you look like you've just seen a monster he questioned in truth at that moment the monster standing in front of me was no longer my sweet bernard but an unrecognizable beast who had managed to ruin my whole life and shatter my Hard in mere seconds, however, I was too weak at the time to confront him, I mumbled something about experiencing period cramps, and he left that night, I sobbed into my pillow with my cheating husband sleeping peacefully next to me, despite the deep sadness, anger consumed me, how could he cheat on me after everything, holding on to this anger, I waited to expose my unfaithful husband to none other than his mother. Early in the morning before Bernard woke up, I opened his phone, gathered all the evidence I needed, and found out his mistress's name is Reader, I sent all the information to my phone, put his phone back, and patiently waited for Deborah to arrive. When Deborah arrived shortly after Bernard left for work, I showed her all the horrible things I found, she, too, shared the same look of horror and disgust that I had when collecting all this data. After moments of complete shock, she spoke up. We need to do something about this, he's absolutely gone crazy, I'm so hurt. Deborah, I know my baby, but we'll get through this, I'll call him right now." Deborah proceeded to call Bernard, putting him on loudspeaker, Bernard, I swear to God, all of this better be some stupid and sick prank because if any of this turns out to be true, I don't know how I will look you in the face again, mom, slow down, what are you talking about, who the hell is Rita, there was a silence, and although nothing was said, everything was indeed confirmed, he was cheating on me, and by the look of it, it had been going on for quite a while. You better get back home right this instant, we need to have this discussion face to face, Deborah hung up the phone, and for the next 30 minutes while waiting for Bernard to return, I was completely inconsolable, finally, Bernard arrived home, but he appeared to have a special surprise with him, he brought Rita, what is the meaning of this, is this the wench, I exclaimed, don't call her that, mom, I love her, Bernard replied, what did you just say, yes, Verity. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but I guess now is about as good a time as ever, I am in love with Rita, she makes me happy, lately, I've realized I am at a higher status than most things of my past life, I have to elevate myself, to put things lightly, you're like the older version of a gaming console, and Rita is like the PS5, what are you saying right now, do you know what you've put Verity through, and you, how dare you get with a married man? Have you no shame, well, mom, I believe that we're soulmates, he's in love with me, and I'm in love with him, we're going to start a family together, oh, so you think that you're going to change this man, newsflash, honey, a cheater will always be a cheater, based on what he's just said, he will always be searching for the bigger and better and newer thing, you're not special, sweetie, take my advice and leave now before things get worse, I can see that you're young, you still have your life ahead of you. You can't be tied to a sick man like this enough, I know you're hurt, Verity, but it's not my fault you let yourself go, you have to understand, as a man, I have needs, and Rita gives them all to me, I guess this all goes without saying, but I want a divorce, as if my heart couldn't shatter anymore, it miraculously did, I was too stunned to say anything again, I started to disengage from this distressing situation, but in the outskirts of my mind. I could perceive faint shouting from Deborah and Bernard engaging in a heated exchange, following some uproar, I received a text from my family lawyer. 
informing me that my great uncle had recently passed away, his will specified that the inheritance money would only be disclosed to the recipient after it had been properly divided among the rightful individuals, although I found this delay irritating, it was characteristic of my great uncle Henry's dramatic nature, the text read, Dearest Verity, I hope you're well, as you know. Your great uncle Henry has left some inheritance money for you, unfortunately, it will take longer than expected to process the funds due to family disagreements over the distribution, please call for further clarifications if needed, take care, knowing my eccentric and toxic family, I doubted there would be any money left for me, I was accustomed to being in last place, a sentiment that echoed in my failed marriage, zoning back into reality, I heard more commotion verity, are you even listening, Bernard has shown us who he is, he doesn't want to be with me anymore, that's that, I can't fight for someone who won't even fight for me, for us, but I will say this, Bernard, by the time karma is finished with you, you will wish you'd never been born, I'm done here, with that, I gathered whatever strength remained, went to my room to pack some things, and walked out the front door, when I left, Deborah called after me, assuring me that everything would be fixed, bless her heart, she still believed that part of her sweet baby boy was alive, however, all I saw was a hollow shell of a man, in the ensuing weeks, I stayed in budget motel rooms, while Bernard expedited the divorce papers, he had friends who could accelerate the process, acknowledging the difficulty for me and expressing a desire to minimize my suffering, it sounded like a guilty conscience at this juncture, I was utterly drained, having expended every ounce of energy in tears, about six months after the debacle with Bernard. Our divorce was officially declared, throughout the entire process of dividing assets, I opted to maintain a cordial demeanor. Surprisingly, Bernard and I were agreeable on most matters, facilitating the swift resolution, Bernard, being the selfish person he was, aimed to retain the majority of his money, well aware that I had nothing to my name, having been a housewife, despite my financial struggles, I harbored no desire for his money, recognizing it as the same wealth that fueled his selfish and malevolent behavior, well, I guess that settles it then, it was nice knowing you, Verity. I hope you take care of yourself, I hope you rot in hell where you belong, I have no desire to keep in contact with you, so please refrain from doing so, have the day you think you deserve, he proclaimed as I stomped off, still bearing the scars of pain and disillusionment while I was technically still married to Bernard, I utilized the money from our shared account to launch a small business, a cafe that I began renting, it served as a means for me to generate income, knowing that I would likely receive little, if anything, from the divorce settlement, when I walked to my recently acquired apartment complex, I received an unexpected email from George, Dear Asperity, my apologies once again for the awful marital situation you're going through, but I have some good news to share with you, please contact me at your earliest convenience, three hours later. George and I met at my quaint little cafe to discuss the important news he couldn't convey over the phone, hello, George, I hope you're well, hey, Verity, I can tell that. You're hurting, I won't take much of your time, let me cut to the chase, you've inherited the money, what did you say, you heard me right, you've got the inheritance, I'm so sorry that everything took such a long time to finalize, you see, the truth is, your great uncle Henry appears to have left most of the money to you, this is a letter of his that you need to read now that all the conditions have been met, the letter read as follows, my dear Verity, I know life has been unkind to you, you've always been put in last place by both friends and family. But I have decided that enough is enough, no more will you be subject to pain and humiliation, please accept this inheritance money and use it to ameliorate your life in the best way that you can, knowing your toxic family members, they most likely won't be too happy with the distribution of funds, but I don't care, all I care about is your health and well-being, which is why, if you are reading this now, you now know that all the money you're about to receive is wholly yours, you shouldn't go. Through any troubles or negotiations with people, I wanted to exempt you from this messy process, hence why you are receiving this money now, I know you are going to do wonderful things, all my love, your great uncle Henry, by the time I finished reading the letter, I was sobbing, some customers got up and laughed due to the embarrassing scene, I was so elated that I couldn't care less if bystanders laughed. Hearing positive news was a welcome relief after months of sobbing uncontrollably and 
wondering what had happened to me, how much is it, inquiringly, I spoke with George, $1700000, he responded, that was a very large sum, I let out a gasp, it was more than enough to keep my firm afloat and allow me to keep growing, George continued on his way after I expressed my deepest gratitude for his devotion and generosity, I informed Deborah of the news that night by calling her, you said the amount is how much, yep, you heard me right, Deborah, in spite of everything, we continue to maintain contact, she committed an abominable act when I was still trusting her, less than 24 hours after I told Bernard not to contact me again, I awoke the following morning to a barrage of angry texts from him, I should have known better, but we still went ahead and met together to talk about his problems, at my coffee house, we met, this is the notorious cafe, then, I suppose it's adorable, Bernard, what is it that you desire, I thought you had stolen enough from me, I'll tell you what I really, want, you may call half of that cash my own. What, what, I learned everything from my mom, the money from her inheritance finally arrived, she informed me, the timing couldn't have been better, would it, in any case, we require that sum of money if you believe I'm going to provide you anything, you're insane, also, with your current income, aren't you comfortable, why are you so fixated on me, when I broke your heart, why were you indifferent, nothing fazed you at all, could you please explain, you were aware that I was in a state of complete mental collapse, all the chaos you wreaked on me had you at the wheel, you saw me go through hell, do you have any further requests for me, when will you finally be content, see me in my casket, will you, well, that's enough, this will not fit into my schedule, as soon as you hand over the cash, I will be gone, the funds are necessary for my nuptials to Rita, why do you believe you have a right to this sum of money? Is something wrong with your mind, that money technically belongs to me? Since the inheritance issue happened while we were still married, I hesitated, mortified, something like that's even possible, I had no idea, so, give me my money, it will be necessary to have legal representation if I ever hand you money, your words have reached me, get out of here, in the morning, I will get in touch with you, because he was furious that he could no longer control me, Bernard reluctantly left. I would have given him a kidney if he had asked if we were still married, at this point. Though, I am too repulsed to even meet this man's gaze, I contacted George and the divorce attorneys first thing in the morning, after I explained my situation, everyone agreed that Bernard had acted irrationally and unethically, the foundation of my issue was the fact that the inheritance money had already been completed when the divorce papers were signed, therefore any cash that came my way was legitimately mine, however. Bernard tried to trick me into thinking I owed him money by using Gaslighting tactics I drove to the house where I had lived for five years, my fury fueling my drive, I got straight to the point when someone answered the door after I knocked, I'm not here for you, I'm here for your malevolent fiancé, indignant, the response came, what's the meaning of this, don't you dare come into my house and cause a ruckus, to this, I retorted, our house, you mean, the house we built together. You have a lot of nerve treating me as if I wasn't good to you, I expressed my belief that Bernard needed to get his head checked, insinuating loose screws, Deborah, like clockwork, emerged from the kitchen, inquiring about the commotion, in response, I accused her of betraying me by revealing the details of the inheritance money to Bernard, Deborah's rationale for the betrayal was unveiled, she believed they could share in the windfall. I couldn't help but draw a connection between Bernard's cheating habit and the apple not falling far from the tree, accusing them all of trying to siphon money. For me, I asserted that the money was rightfully mine, given the signed divorce papers, Bernard, displeased with this news, erupted into a rampage, unleashing a torrent of yelling and cursing, even resorting to breaking things, witnessing Bernard's true colors, I thought our argument had concluded when he left in his car, however, upon reaching my cafe, I discovered the aftermath of vandalism. Broken windows and damaged furniture, it was evident who the perpetrator was, and in disbelief, I called. Out, really, Bernard, you vandalized my shop, his chilling response echoed his frustration, it had to be done, you aren't giving us the money, maybe now you'll cooperate, I'm aware you don't have security cameras, so good luck trying to press charges, wow, just wow. I cut the call and dialed my friend George to assess the situation, George's laughter ensued as he said, we got him now, Verity, confused, I responded, what do you mean, he's ruined everything, even if I fix it, he'll come back again and, again, 
George reassured me, don't you see, Verity, we can sue him for this, with that being said, we can also renegotiate the terms of your divorce settlement, dismayed, I replied, but I don't have evidence, George insisted, yes, you do, there's always evidence, true enough, I discovered that the supposedly non-functional cameras in the building were still operational, I had clear footage of Bernard's vandalism, presenting this evidence to George, we crafted a case against Bernard, fortunately, our case was well received, leveraging the history of our tumultuous relationship and the collection of verbal and emotional abuse, the judge favored me, awarding $20,000 in damages from Bernard, this decision enraged Bernard, prompting him to appeal, however, time and again, his appeals were rejected, with the newfound funds, I could invest in my cafe, allowing it to grow and expand, the last I heard of Bernard and Deborah, they were in constant quarrels, rumors circulated that Bernard was frequently seen with a young and attractive blonde woman on his arm when my story unfolded i realized that not everyone can relate to the idea of achieving revenge thankfully i was able to take action against the abuse i share my story to encourage those facing similar situations to stand up against the mistreatment they endure my journey began when my husband uttered these words i need to tell you something important what is it babe no i'm afraid i have some news i need to tell you i saw my mom and sister do something very awful, what is it, I finally believe you, I don't think these women want what's best for you, and I'm so sorry I never believed you, Micah was acknowledging the numerous instances in which Gladys and Hannah, his mother-in-law and sister-in-law, respectively, had disparaged and humiliated you without reason, this included deliberately ruining outfits for formal occasions, sabotaging food and drinks to embarrass you publicly, and slandering your successful business, all. Of this hostility stemmed from their resentment towards you for taking Micah away from them. Despite your repeated attempts to share this with Micah, he had not believed you until this moment, well, what made you finally believe me? Micah proceeded to show you some security camera footage of your business, both of you run a successful business that sells crochet paraphernalia, from baby clothes to purses, despite the business doing well, your mother-in-law and sister-in-law consistently discouraged you from pursuing it questioning your capability and expertise, they even suggested that you should quit and become a simple housewife or working woman, insinuating that you were not intelligent enough to handle the business, do you see what I mean, these women always tried to dissuade me from doing things that made me happy, I think they must have been jealous because why else would they do something so horrid, your suspicions of them being malicious finally came to light when they attempted to humiliate you, and in those moments, you'd turn to your husband, showing him the consequences of their actions, this revelation led Micah to believe and support you, recognizing the unjust treatment you endured from his mother and sister, he wouldn't hear it, he had to see it for himself, finally, the video footage that Micah showed me was truly awful, I didn't know people could stoop this low, in the video, two masked individuals with feminine frames, one seemingly taller and one shorter, were attempting to vandalize our building with spray paint, graffitiing our store, Micah pointed out, take a closer look, look at this lady with a necklace, following his instruction, I scrutinized the footage, and sure enough, the lady appeared to be Gladys, wearing a rare and exotic necklace that Micah got her from Fiji, I see what you mean now, who else could it have been, they look quite similar, I believe you now, I broke down crying, overwhelmed by a mix of anger and hurt, it took him this long to believe in me, but I was also relieved that someone finally saw what I was going through, I hadn't wanted to tell him about this. Considering it was his family, and I couldn't exactly slander or sue them for the damages they were causing, however, I did want to get my revenge, and I had been contemplating what that revenge would look like for a very long time. Hannah called Micah out of the blue, bring up the devil. Huh, he took my call and, after a short chat, he informed me, all right, so Hannah just informed me that Uncle Peter is back from a long trip and mom wanted to have a big family reunion since a lot of people are home for the summer how about this weekend are you planning to discuss what we just witnessed with them i wish i could but i'm not sure it's possible my sister and mom are the ones you see there however i will be of assistance to you in any manner i can if you wish to approach them on the weekend micah and i went to gladys's house early to finish getting ready for the huge feast everyone loved uncle peter so his long-awaited return would be a huge deal, when I got there, I saw that. Hannah and Gladys had gone from being very friendly and outgoing to being very envious and repulsed, oh, 
You two came quite early, indeed, we were hoping to lend a hand, Mom, it is our expectation that many will attend today, you are really beautiful, aren't you, we're happy to help. Hannah and Gladys looked at me as if I had taken something from them the moment I spoke out, but at that moment, they were unable to present any tangible proof. The vandalism at your lovely business is just heartbreaking, Jenna, it was terrible and horrible, and I saw it on my way here, a six-year-old could tell that these ladies were up to no good, that they looked conspiratorial, while they were worried, their faces were abnormally happy, even joyful, even though I could see that they were trying to hold back their laughs, I decided not to cause a fuss just yet, I would not budge from my resolve to avenge myself when the time was right. I opted to pretend to be clueless while this was going on, to avoid getting his hands filthy. Micah trailed behind Sue, worst thing ever, the question of who might have perpetrated such a horrific act was voiced by both of us, seeing what became of something we had labored so hard to get was devastating, don't worry, the police will get to the bottom of this, I declared, what about the police, whose police force is this, given the gravity of the offense, it was likely the work of careless youths out for fun, as Hannah pointed out, there was no need to call the cops, Hannah, I am deeply moved by your genuine concern for these so-called little rascals, but someone needs to make sure they pay the price for what they did, I was adamant that they were competent, after all, by and large, I found myself siding with Hannah, in your adolescent years, how many naive choices did you make, we should exercise restraint, join me, and I will see to it that the party is well prepared. As they tried to dismiss the matter they had probed so thoroughly, I saw that they were perspiring Micah and I shared a knowing glance before we both got down to helping with the party's preparations, early in the morning and into the afternoon, we set out to prepare, cook, and clean, the great reunion started to get underway at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I have something for you, a concealed microphone, Micah stated as he drew me aside once we were both set up, put this on, why? Please tell me, no problem, I said. My sister and mom are too intimidating for me to face head on, you expect me to be a strong, dominating man, and I'm not that kind of guy, to be honest, though, I prefer this one, all the credit will go to you if you bring them to light on your own, without fail, you have outstripped me in strength, do it while wearing this microphone, you can obtain the justice you deserve, and you never know what you could uncover, I will not intervene to prevent you, even though I wanted Micah to be more forceful. I was appreciative of the help he gave and the language he used, after that, I strolled around to locate those two people plugged in the microphone and pushed record at last i found them in the kitchen arguing furiously i lingered outside the door hoping to overhear their discussion before i crossed the threshold mom she's really knowledgeable her expression as she stared at us was priceless hannah was ecstatic hannah what a bother paranoia is a trait of yours the other individual swore to god and told mom that she had no idea it had been them she is quite knowledgeable you know, just relax, what does it matter if she does know something, do not be surprised if I tell you that Micah loves both of us, in the event that she were to discover the truth, she would inform him, prompting Micah to dismiss her as insane, this is what has served us well thus far, hasn't it, do you recall the day we placed spoilt milk in her breakfast and drink or ink on her dress before she pitched the crochet business, this she informed Micah of, she could have told him her suspicions had she wanted to, however, he was prepared to ignore it due to his love for us, at this point, he will also do it for us, I became so annoyed by their malicious comments that I stormed into the room at that same time, despite filming every second of it, I was worried that the distant location would have rendered the microphone ineffective, in order to exact my vengeance, I had to draw nearer in order to collect evidence against them, you too, hello. In a moment, Uncle Peter will be at the door. Do we still have tasks to complete? I jumped in wow, Jenna, you really caught us off guard, remarked one of them, indeed, Jenna, my heart is fragile, refrain from repeating those foolish actions, the other person remarked, seemed like I wasn't weak enough, what on earth were you saying, I inquired, my bad, I didn't intend any harm, just that you appear to be quite active for someone of your age, they said before turning around, my goodness, it might have been a dream, but I thought I caught a glimpse of you recently, and I think you were doing something strenuous. I dropped hints that you were wearing a mask and something black for an instant, they halted their actions, haha, 
I think what you were doing was rather strenuous, actually, it could have been something really terrible, in fact, please tell me what you're trying to say, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about, sweetheart, said I, to make room for us to talk in peace, Gladys shut the door, what are you attempting to imply, inquired one of them, I promise I'm not implying anything by saying this, put that down, we have no idea what you're referring to, I am uncertain, yes, if I'm being completely forthright along with this other figure, I may have also observed another somebody whose face was concealed, participating in an incredibly illegal activity, it is unfortunate, may these lawbreakers be apprehended, who cares, mom, I believe it's time for us to leave, Hannah, hurry up. It would be a shame if you missed this, miss what, I then played them the videotape that Micah had given. Yes, that's great, they were apprehended by you, we can stop looking into them now that we know their identities, one of them adamantly demanded that we just forget about it, the way you're handling things is becoming intolerable, Jenna, buildings like yours have been the target of vandalism before, get over it already, it's not significant, the second person chimed in no, absolutely not, ladies, it is a major issue, in my opinion, you see, this video taught me something fascinating, in order to understand what I was saying, the two women squinted and pressed their faces close to the screen as I raised the phone, the expression of terror and disbelief that followed validated all of my concerns, it was indeed them who damaged my priceless structure, I warned you, mom, no, this doesn't show anything, Damien, do you know anyone else who has this necklace, one of them shouted, this is too much for me, then there was Hannah and myself, refrain from speaking any further, we're in her clutches, mom, what is it that you desire from me? Indeed, Jenna, we succeeded, we damaged your company's property, now the question is, how will you address this? Yeah, Jenna, you're completely powerless in this scenario, Micah will always prioritize his feelings for us over his feelings for you, and we know it, therefore, he loves us too much to harm us in any way, shape, or form, even if you try to harm us, yes, he does love you all, and yes, he will do nothing. My darling, what gives you the impression that I won't, is it true that you too make me feel threatened, you dare to pursue my affairs, my darling, you won't get away with it because of me, both Gladys and Hannah made motions as if to grab the phone from my hand, but I was fast enough to get away from them, you foolish little child, come back here, your data is safe in the backup, regardless of whether you end up with this phone, therefore, you should not attempt to oppose me unless you wish to further weaken your already fragile heart. Don't you dare antagonize my mother in your opinion. Are you humorous? Think you're clever? We need all the data right now, or I'll swear to you I will. What? What? What are your plans? I'll hurt you in ways that you never thought were possible. My heart is racing. Do not injure me, you snarky little wench. Oh my goodness. I cracked open the door as we fought our way around the kitchen. I think it's great. Micah was standing just beyond the entrance, so I did as well. I need your help. Your sister and parents have gone insane, uncle. Peter is here, and I came to inform you about it. What's happening? I'll fill you in on the situation. We are being threatened with harm by your prophetic wife, who is attempting to accuse us of vandalizing her business very well. That is not accurate, let Micah know. Quietness settled in, stuttering and stammering, Micah appeared distressed, I know you're not one to pick fights, especially with your mom and sister, but I'm begging you to stand up for your wife and me right now, oh, please. Nevertheless, no one spoke, and Micah's expression darkened, this broke my heart, Micah will never be on your side, that much is clear, my sweetheart, he has a stronger affection for us than for you, now that's not true. I love you all the same, you're all very close to me, and that's why it's so hard to choose, choose what, why not choose the truth, we both know it, you're the one who showed me the footage in the first place, Micah, why would you do that, because it's my business too, and what you guys did was terrible, not just this thing, but all the other times you've antagonized my wife as well, you guys need to stop, please, we'll forgive you, speak for yourself, I'm still pressing charges, not on my watch, at that moment, Uncle Peter, our venerated guest of honor, stumbled into the area, he seemed happy but also concerned because we were all here while everyone else was waiting for the festivities to begin, oh, Peter, my love, it's so good to see you, you look well, yes, yes, we'll begin the festivities, 
momentarily, let me escort you to your special seat, tell me all about the trip, we aren't finished with you, Jenna, if you try anything, I swear on daddy's grave that we'll make sure Micah divorces you, why do you treat Micah like a child, he is a grown man capable of making his own decisions, he wouldn't divorce me just because you said so, right, babe, there was hesitation in Micah's response you see, he's hesitating, meaning he doesn't care about you the way that you thought he did, really. Micah, really, he dropped his head for the second time in five minutes, I really did, Gladys angrily stomped away and went to the grand dining table that was hosting about 30 people, I settled into my seat, making a conscious effort to maintain composure, before long, Michael and Hannah joined, and I remained silent, despite Michael's intent gaze suggesting he had something to say, however, the tension between us was too palpable for any words, soon after, Gladys and Uncle Peter arrived, and we, commenced the festivities. Despite the lingering discomfort from a recent argument while we were eating, the unresolved anger within me boiled over, I couldn't contain it any longer, so I gathered everyone's attention and declared, I have an important announcement, two individuals here have consistently harbored resentment towards me, conspiring to make my life unbearable, some of you may know whom I refer to, but just in case, let me show you. I played the recording from the earlier argument, and shock and gasps filled the room, Hannah and Gladys sat frozen, seemingly unable to respond, amid accusations and denials, chaos ensued at the dinner table, I confronted them, and tensions escalated, the situation took an unexpected turn when, amidst the turmoil, the sound of approaching sirens grew louder, as panic set in, the police arrived at the house, accusations were exchanged, with Gladys vehemently protesting her innocence and Hannah attempting to flee, however, Michael, previously silent, revealed a crucial detail, he had called the police, he explained that he had secretly recorded the conversation Jenna played for everyone, leading to a warrant for Gladys and Hannah's arrest, in that moment, the dynamics shifted, Michael voiced his support for Jenna, highlighting the mistreatment she endured, the police took action, arresting Gladys, who resisted with curses, and pursuing Hannah, who tried to evade capture. As the events unfolded, a plea for cooperation echoed, urging everyone not to make the Situation more difficult than it already was, however, their attempts to escape were in vain, and both women were caught, as they were being dragged out of the house, they cast accusatory glances at me, labeling me a demon, and directed their ire at Michael, branding him a betrayer, despite the humiliating scene, once they left, the night resumed, although the atmosphere was a bit awkward, we began sharing our experiences of Hannah and Gladys's toxic behavior, even Uncle Peter chimed in, Expressing a preference for prison over being around those two. Laughter filled the room, and we proceeded to enjoy the greatest family reunion ever, free from the toxicity of my in-laws, as Hannah and Gladys spent the night in jail reflecting on their actions, various family members received calls from the local jail, some answered, advising them to use the time to learn a lesson, while others pretended network issues, the majority simply refused to accept the calls, needless to say. My relationship with Michael significantly improved after he stepped in and called the police, as for Gladys and Hannah, they were released from jail but faced fines for the damages, dealing another blow to their ego now, whenever we encounter each other, the looks of jealousy and disgust they once wore have transformed into expressions of shame and fear, a change I find preferable, revenge has never tasted sweeter, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.